Hey, what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithben.com and today I'm partnering with Name Hero Web Hosting to bring you this step-by-step -step tutorial where I'll be walking you through seven ways to troubleshoot and fix the this site can't be reached error. Encountering this error can be frustrating whether you're a beginner trying to access a website or a website owner facing issues with your site. This error typically indicates a problem with a network connection or the website's server configuration. And in this video, we'll explore seven common methods to fix this error, providing step-by-step -step instructions that are suitable for both beginners and website owners. And really quick, before we get started, if you get any value out of this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Helps me bring you more resources and it keeps you up to date with all of the WordPress and tech trends happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. Also, as we're going through this video, I highly recommend checking out Name Hero's blog post on the topic. I've linked to it in the video description below, but this is a great resource to reference as you're watching this tutorial. All right, with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so the first recommendation is to restart your internet connection. But before you shut everything off, verify that other websites aren't working on your browser by opening a new browser tab and then try accessing another website to check if the problem is specific to one site or your entire internet connection. If you're still seeing that this site can't be reached error whenever you're visiting other sites, then restart your internet connection by turning off your router and modem, give it a few seconds, and then reboot and turn them back on. This often resolves connection-related issues. If that doesn't work, you can try connecting to the internet by using a different network like a mobile hotspot, public Wi-Fi, or even a friend or family member's network. But if the problem still persists when you're using a different network, then you'll want to try the next method, which is to clear your browser data and cache. So sometimes outdated corrupted browsers can cause this site can't be reached error, and clearing the cache and cookies can help resolve that issue. And I'm going to show you how to do this in three popular browsers. Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. First, the Chrome browser. So in the upper right corner of the browser, look for this three dot icon and click on it. This will open a drop down menu and from here select clear browser data. Next, you'll get a pop up window where you'll wanna make sure that you check the boxes next to cached images and files and cookies and other site data. These options ensure that both the browser cache and cookies are cleared. Then above that, you'll see a drop-down menu labeled Time Range. Click on that drop-down menu and select the desired time range for which you want to clear the cache and cookies. If you want to clear all data, choose All Time. But for this example, I'm selecting the last 24 hours. Then once you've chosen the desired options, click on the Clear Data button located at the bottom of the window. And then after you've cleared the browsing history and cache files, reload the website with the error message and see if the website loads correctly. All right, moving on to our next browser. If you use Firefox, here's how to clear the cache. So once again, in the upper right corner of the browser, look for this three-lined icon, commonly referred to as the hamburger icon. Then from that dropdown, select Settings. Then within the Settings sidebar, Open the Privacy and Security tab. Then look for the Cookies and Site Data section and click the Clear Data button. You'll then get a pop-up window where you'll want to make sure the Cookies and Site Data and Cached Web Content boxes are checked and then click the Clear button. And after you've cleared the web content and cached files, reload the website with the error message and see if the website loads correctly. All right, moving on to our final browser, which is Safari. So if you use the Safari browser, here's how to clear the cache. Within your computer's menu bar, click on the Safari menu item and select Settings. Then within the Settings menu, make sure you have the Advanced tab open and then check the box next to where it says Show Develop Menu in Menu Bar. Then head back to your computer's menu bar and you should now see a Develop Menu item. Click on it and then select Empty Cache from the drop-down. Then you may also want to clear your browser history by selecting the History menu item, and then from that drop-down, select Clear History. Then you'll get a little pop-up window where you'll select the time frame. I'm going to go with the last two days, so I'll select that from the drop-down, and then click the Clear History button. 
After you've cleared the browser history and cache files, reload the website with the error message and see if the website loads correctly. If not, let's move on to the next step, which is to disable your antivirus and firewall. So for the first example, I'm gonna go over how to address this when using a PC. This is my laptop that's running Windows 11 Pro, and I use this for some music production and to tinker on from time to time, so I apologize about the unorganized files on my home screen. But either way, firewalls and security software can sometimes block access to certain websites. So here's how to check and adjust the settings in Windows. First on your keyboard, press the Windows key plus the letter R to open the Run dialog box. Then type Control Panel and press Enter or click the OK button. This will open the Control Panel. Then from here, click on System and Security. Next, select Windows Defender Firewall. And on the left side of the Windows Defender Firewall window, click on Turn Windows Defender Firewall on or off. Then make sure that the Turn on Windows Defender Firewall option is selected. If they aren't, click those two radio buttons to enable the firewall and click the OK button. However, they are already enabled here, so we'll head back to the Windows Defender Firewall window by clicking this arrow. Then from here, click on where it says Allow an app or feature through Windows Defender Firewall. And scroll down on that list and find the desired web browser, like Google Chrome. And again, make sure it's listed and that it has both the private and public check boxes checked. If they're not checked, go ahead and check those boxes. If the browser isn't listed, click on the Change Settings button and then allow another app to add the browser. Then if you made any changes, don't forget to click the OK button and then exit the Windows Defender Firewall settings. Next, if you're running antivirus software, here are some recommended steps to troubleshoot. My current antivirus software didn't let me add an exception for Google, only Chrome extensions, so that's why I'm just listing out the steps here. But I recommend checking out Name Hero's blog post on this one so you can go through the recommended steps. Okay, moving on. Next, let's go over the Mac version. So I'm switching to my Mac desktop. And then from your desktop, within your dock, access the system settings. Then within the sidebar menu, select Network. And if you look towards the right, you'll see a firewall option. Mine is currently inactive, so the firewall is obviously not causing the site not reached error. However, if you click on it and you turn it on, so let me do that really quick, you'll want to click the Options button. And from here, within the Applications section, click that little plus icon and find the Google Chrome browser app and add it to the list. And then once added, click the OK button. This will tell the firewall to allow all incoming connections from Chrome, if you have the firewall enabled. All right, so if the this site can't be reached error was caused due to a corrupted antivirus software or firewall, following those steps should resolve the issue. If not, let's try the next steps, which are flushing the DNS cache and changing the DNS server address. So another reason why the this site can't be reached error could occur is due to DNS, which stands for domain name system, could be because DNS issues, and this can typically be resolved by flushing the DNS cache. So let's do that first on my PC. So from here, go ahead and click the Windows button plus the letter R to open the Run dialog box, and then type the letters CMD and press Enter or click the OK button. This will open the command prompt, where in that first command, type the following command, IP config forward slash flush DNS. This command instructs your system to clear the DNS cache. And when done, you'll get this notification that the DNS resolver cache was flushed. However, if flushing the DNS cache didn't resolve the error and you're still seeing it when trying to access websites, let's try changing the DNS servers. So sometimes the default DNS servers provided by your internet service provider may be experiencing issues. And changing to alternative DNS servers such as Google DNS or OpenDNS can help resolve the this site can't be reached error. 
So first, here's how to change your DNS servers on a PC running Windows. All right, once again, press the Windows key plus the letter R to open the Run dialog box, and this time type ncpa.cpl, and press Enter or click the OK button. This will open the Network Connections window. Next, right-click on your active network connection and select Properties. This will open the Network Adapter Properties window. Then, in the Network Adapter Properties window, locate the Internet Protocol version 4 TCP slash IPv4 and double-click on it to open it. Then, within the Internet Protocol version 4 Properties window, select the option Use the following DNS server addresses. Then, enter the preferred and alternate DNS addresses. For example, you can use Google DNS by entering 8888 8 as the preferred DNS server and 8844 as the alternate DNS server. Then once those are filled out, click the OK button to save the changes and exit the properties window. By flushing your DNS cache and changing DNS servers, you can effectively troubleshoot DNS-related issues that may be causing the this site can't be reached error. These methods help ensure that your system is obtaining accurate and up-to-date DNS information, enabling successful website access. Finally, let me show you how to change the DNS servers on a Mac. Okay, so from your system settings window within the network section, open your Wi-Fi settings. Then click the Details button, and then within that sidebar, click on DNS. Then from here, you may see some grayed out numbers in the DNS servers box. You can ignore those and click the plus icon to add your preferred and alternate DNS addresses. And it's just like the Windows version. For the Google DNS, enter 8.8.8.8 as the preferred DNS server and click enter on your keyboard. Then add 8.8.4.4 as the alternate DNS server and click enter on your keyboard again. Then once both of those are added, click the OK button to save the changes and exit the system settings menu. Again, these methods help to ensure that your system is obtaining accurate and up-to-date DNS information, enabling successful website access. Finally, if you're a website owner and you can't access your site due to this site can't be reached error, here are some potential solutions to address it. Again, you can access these tips by visiting the Name Hero blog post on this topic that I've linked to in the video description below. So first, check the server status. Ensure that your web server hosting the website is up and running. Verify that the server hasn't encountered any hardware or software issues that could be causing the problem. And you can do this by logging into your hosting service provider account and checking for any notifications regarding the server failure. Next, verify your SSL certificate is up to date and valid. If the website uses HTTPS, log in to your web hosting account to ensure that the SSL certificate is valid and properly installed. An expired or misconfigured SSL certificate can prevent users from accessing the site. And if you have an outdated SSL certificate, renew or configure that cert as necessary. You can access your SSL settings within your cPanel typically, just FYI. Next, try deactivating your WordPress plugins, especially the ones that you've recently updated. This can be done from your plugin management page accessible within your WordPress dashboard. Finally, if any of these tips are confusing or you need some professional assistance, feel free to contact your hosting provider or tech support. They'll be more than happy to help troubleshoot and guide you through the issue to ensure everything is working properly. And as always, if you're having trouble with these steps or still getting that error, feel free to leave a comment under this video or within Name Hero's blog post and we'd be happy to help you out in any way that we can. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're thinking about starting a blog, you gotta check out my step-by-step -step tutorials. They'll show you everything you need to know in order to build, grow, and monetize a professional WordPress blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.